Hello everybody, welcome back to Teach Me to Science, and today we're going to be talking about exothermic versus endothermic processes. First, let's talk about what an exothermic process is. In an exothermic process, heat is released, or heat leaves your system. Typically, in an exothermic process, the object gets hot. For example, when you light a match, the chemicals create an exothermic process which creates heat in the form of a flame. Lighting a match is also an example of converting chemical energy into heat or thermal energy. Another process which is an exothermic process is your combustion engine in your car. If you've ever touched the hood of a car after it's been running, then you know that this is an exothermic process because the hood of your car gets hot. This process turns chemical energy into kinetic energy. An endothermic process is an example of heat being taken in by the system. An example of this is ice melting because ice is typically colder than the environment it's in, which means that ice takes in heat energy and begins to melt. Another example of an endothermic process is the sun warming up the cold water in Lake Superior. If Lake Superior is our system and the sun is our surroundings, energy is being transferred from the sun to Lake Superior. Alright, now that we've defined exo and endothermic, let's take a look at a couple of different examples. Pause the video and try and find out if these are exo or endothermic processes. Alright, so an iced tea in the hot sun will likely warm up because energy from the sun is being transferred to the iced tea. This means that the iced tea is taking in energy, which is endothermic. In the case of photosynthesis, the plant is taking in energy from the sun, which is also an endothermic process. It's important to note here that I'm considering the flower to be my system and the sun to be my surroundings. How about the reaction that takes place in a hot pack? Hot packs give off heat, which is a classic sign of an exothermic process. If the hot pack is my system, then it is transferring heat to the surroundings, like your hands. All right, and finally, the baking soda volcano. There's no reason for you to know this, but when a baking soda volcano goes off, it gets cold, which means that it is endothermic the cold reaction will take in heat from the surroundings. Thank you for watching. If you could please like this video and subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. Bye!